started. Okay, well, maybe you can introduce yourself for Elena and David. Can you tell them where you're from? I'm from Spain. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> nice work. Um, okay, so you guys all did really well with your introductions. You guys did a wonderful job. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, scientists and animals and conservation. It's a really, really nice class if you guys um, enjoy um, like saving the environment and learning a little bit about science. So I'm going to um, see, can you guys all see the Verbling chat? Uh, no, I'm going I to write can. hello here. Can you guys see it? No, I only can see the Google chat. The Google? Okay. Well, let's, like, everybody can open Google chat, please. And I will write hello here with two smiley faces. So tell me if you guys can see what I wrote. Uh, Mauricio, were you able to open Google Chat? And, yes, and yes. Adrian? Yes. Okay, David can see it? Alright, so everybody's here in Google Chat. Okay, I'm going to give you a link to, um, to this article here. And I'm also going to share um, well, I can wait for that, I think. Um, we're going to, to read a little bit about um, scientists and different things that they do to save um, some endangered species in this article. And then you guys are going to interview each other. So you guys are going to practice asking questions to each other. Um, so I think it'll be a really cool class. I think it'll be really nice. I'm excited. Um, so maybe we can start with David. Mm -hmm. David, could you maybe read the title of the article here, and yes. um, and Why perhaps the first two paragraphs also. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> mm, uh, why scientists uh, wear animal costumes? It's not just for Halloween. From grouping cranes to pandas. People masquerade as animals to get closer to their to their research subjects. Excellent, and, nice job. Okay, and then you can read the first two paragraphs in the article, please. Uh, yes, I am trying to find it because. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to say hi also to Aka. He came to class. Hi, Aka. Yes, hello. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Can you tell the other students where you're from today? Uh, yes, I'm from Japan, and okay. yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, well, I remember you from other classes, but for the other students, mm -hmm. yeah, just so you could introduce yourself to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, David, did you find the article? Did you Were you able to scroll yes. down? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I, okay. I got it. It's Halloween okay. year-round year for some wildlife researchers who don't Customs to get closer to the animals they are working to save. From giant pandas to whooping cranes to even crocodiles, many scientists disguise themselves as animals to collect valuable data that they wouldn't be able to get well in their human skins. Nice job. And can you say that word for me one more time? Disguise? Disguise? Disguise. Mm -hmm. Disguised. Very good. Disguised. Yeah, perfect. Nice job. Um, so why do some of these researchers put on costumes? Like we see in the picture, there's a man that he looks like he's dressed up like a panda. Yes. I think they do to, to, to collect data, like, like I, I am reading. And to be with the animals and and be a part of, of of them I think very good yeah that's right excellent so that's their motivation to um, to be able to research the animals more effectively even though it's a little bit of a challenge so we're going to read about some things that that people are willing to do um, to be able to help these animals to what lengths they're able to go so Elena, maybe we could ask you to read the next two little paragraphs. Oh, also I wanted to welcome Carlos. Hi, Carlos.
Carlos, can you hear me? Okay, Carlos, maybe um, if your microphone starts working, you can just go ahead and let us know through um, through the chat, or you can, oh, he lost his connection. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of people are having problems with their connections today. Okay, he's back. Hi, Carlos. <laughs> Hello. Oh, he left again. Yeah, I think he's having problems loading it. Okay, that's okay. Um, so we'll just ask Elena um, yes. to go ahead and read the next two paragraphs, please. Yes, Michelle, with pleasure. Sometimes their costumes, their costume goes beyond just putting on clothes. Caregivers is a China Research and Conservation Center for the Giant Pandat. The Volongo Nature Reserve in Sunchyong Province. For for instance, dressed in furry giant panda costumes, and then sprinkle themselves with panda poop and pee. The next, yeah. Also. Yeah, the next one too. <laughs> that's that's to mask the human smell said Andrea Muller of uh, Pandas International, a Colorado-based based organization that supports uh, the Chinese Panda Center. Okay, so what do these researchers have to do in order to be able to um, effectively research and take care of pandas? <laughs> Something gross? <laughs> yeah, that... They put uh, they put the clothes, yeah, and um, <laughs> it smells. It smells also. Yeah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> David, what what do they have to put on themselves to make themselves smell? Uh, I think the <laughs> they they do something I I I never do. I'll never do because uh, they uh, sprinkle or lie in the floor with uh, all the panda poops and peas and something similar. <laughs> yeah, so they are really dedicated to their work. They really want to help these pandas <laughs> because that's pretty disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, really um, brave, really, really <laughs> brave scientists. <laughs> yeah. So um, they're very, very dedicated. I think they're, yeah. oh, they're they really want to do a good job. <laughs> so um, maybe, Antonio, you could read the next two little paragraphs for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I've been wearing uh, panda suits during the calls medical checkups. Staff mini minimize the animal's stress and human attachment. Muller said, uh, "She is wearing pandas in captivity, worth it." Uh, the young animals spend two years with their mothers before they are able to be re uh, released into the wild. That's not easy. So, so far, the center has released just three panda scouts, including a female named Sui Sui early this month. They, and their eventual goal is to boost the wild population of 1,600 uh, 1, pandas. Okay, so what is the goal of this, um, this research center? <coughs> so, Sorry, can you repeat, please? Sure, sure. What is the goal of the research center? Like, ¿cuál es la meta? What's, mm -hmm. what's their goal? Well, I think the, the goal is uh, to get the the pandas uh, uh, get lived normally in in her uh, her natural place. Yeah, very good. You could say in their natural habitat. Perfect. Habitat. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so the wild population of pandas, these giant pandas, is very low. So they want to help to boost or increase the population. 
Mm -hmm. Good job. Um, are there any vocabulary words here that are unfamiliar to you guys? No? Okay. <laughs> All right, we can continue on. So this was about the pandas. This is something that researchers have done to help pandas. So let's read the next little portion about spirit bears, another kind of animal that's endangered. Um, maybe, um, Adrian, would you like to read the next two paragraphs? Um, spirit, spirit uh, bears uh, on an island and on an uh, island north of Vancouver, Canada, lived a tiny group of the cult spirit bears, uh, black bear with a genetic vari variation uh, that gives them uh, with four. See picture of the spirit bear in National Geographic magazine. Uh, Biologist uh, Tom uh, Reimage uh, of the University of Victoria in British Columbia uh, wondered uh, if white for no fuel uh, gives spirit bears on uh, Atantash in fishing pink chum and cojo salmon. So a few years ago, uh, he and his students uh, dropped. Uh, themselves in either white or black fabric, uh, waded uh, into a fishing hole and record uh, how the salmon uh, behaved. Very good. So you guys can click on this picture. I'll share my screen with you. Um, you guys can click on this on this link to see the picture of. Um, of a spirit yeah. bear. Oh. Hold on just a second. There we go. So this is a spirit bear. So um, so this is what they're talking about. It has um, a genetic variation that makes its fur white. But it's basically the same thing as a black bear. So, um, so what did the research want to find out? What did the researchers, scientists, want to find out about these spirit bears. Um, um, I don't know. Um, it's okay. Um, in the second paragraph here, it says that um, that this biologist he wondered if white fur gives spirit bears an advantage in fishing. So um, he wanted to know if this would help them to be more effective fishermen when they were fishing for salmon. So what did this? What did the biologist and the students that they wanted to find out? What did they do? How did they try to find out? They also had to wear some kind of a costume. Mm. Uh, maybe we could ask also, maybe another student could help us to, to answer. Um, maybe we could ask Aka. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in either white or black fabric, wedded in the, into a fishing hole. So maybe they wear the black bear-like costume, and mm -hmm. to to record uh, the how the salmon uh, move differently compared mm -hmm. with white bear, probably. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So um, instead of going in just like dress normally like a person, they would take like fabric, like this white fabric, and they would like drape it over their heads, you know, to to hide themselves and pretend like they were like the spirit bear. And they would see if the fish were afraid, if the fish swam away. Um, and they would, so they would go like with the fabric over themselves like this. And they would go into the lake or into the river where the fish were. So they would be in the water with this 
like black fabric or the white fabric and they would have their notes you know they would be taking notes like doing their research so um, so the, they also made a big effort to um, to do research about about these spirit bears to find out what was happening um, and how their their different fur affected the fish and their ability to survive in their habitat um, so maybe I could ask Mauricio to read what the outcome of this experiment was. Can you read the next two paragraphs? Um, yes. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> uh, there, the, there, uh, there, uh, is there their hypothesis? Uh-huh, perfect. Ah, okay. Their hypothesis was correct. We saw a shift in salmon response depending on what we were wearing, said Regman. During the day, the fish were less evasive to, to the white costumes, which is what we saw watching the salmon interacting with real bears. See video searching for the spirit bear. The study published in the Biological Journal of the Lineal Society in 2009 suggests that white fur may help bears be more successful at fishing, possibly because salmon don't recognize the relative the relatively rare animals as pred predators. Predators, very good. Predators. Nice job. Yeah, very good. So, what was uh, the result of their research? Was their hypothesis correct? And yes, uh, they were right. And uh, using these white costumes, uh, and they, uh, I don't know, they they saw how the salmon uh, how it react if if they were uh, real bears. Yeah. Very good. Mm. Excellent. Great job. Um, so it says that it's possible that the fish don't recognize um, that the bears are predators because of their white fur. They're just used to seeing black fur always um, in, the, in the bears and their predators. All right, so, um, so we've learned about how people are saving pandas, how they're saving spirit bears, and let's read the third one here about whooping cranes. Um, so I think it's Akka's turn. Akka, can you read the first two paragraphs here? Okay. Uh, uh, at, at the International Crane Foundation, based in uh, Baradpur, uh, Bar Wisconsin, dressing like a ghost isn't just for Halloween. Uh, staff drape themselves in white to hide their bodies and use bird shaped hand uh, puppet to interact with baby whooping cranes hatched at the fountain. Uh, sorry, hatched at the foundation. Foundation, excellent, nice job. So, what do you see in the illustration, Aka? Uh, uh, they feed uh, the kind of, uh, how can I say, uh, to mimic the, this uh, bird hatch to feed uh, this baby uh, bird. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. So why do you think that is important? Um, maybe the baby bird recognizes their, their parents or maybe the food, uh, the relation between the, the hatch uh, shape of the heart or something to mm -hmm. to recognize how baby recognizes this. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, very good. And we'll see also another reason why as we continue reading. Maybe we could ask David to read mm -hmm. um, the following three paragraphs just to finish the subheading. Okay. We try to replicate what actual parents do, said Kim Boardman the assistant curator of birds. The puppet offers natural food, catches grasshoppers, and teach, teaches chicks to forage. Chicks hatched in May at the center are released into the wild in October. In the 1940s, only about 20 whooping cranes lived in the wild due to widespread hunting and habitat loss. Today, there are over uh, 400, thanks to hunting bands, habitat protection, and yes, puppetry. <laughs> Great job. So, um, after reading this, like, 
David, what would you say is an important reason to use these puppets instead of having just a person like handing the food to the bird? Yes, I think it's important because uh, the it 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 works uh, because uh, we uh, in 1940s only there was uh, 20 whooping cranes and now uh, are over 400 and uh, yes I think uh, it's because the scientists uh, were willing to give food uh, every day to these these cranes and and this allow them to to grow exactly very good and how would it affect um, having a puppet that looks like a bird instead of a person how would that affect their relationship with other birds and with humans I think it's uh, because the cranes uh, don't afraid uh, because uh, they can't uh, see a human body I think yeah, so it would probably be very stressful for the birds to grow up um, seeing people all the time. And they would also associate people with food, and they wouldn't be afraid of people. Um, so would they be able to release them into the wilds if they were raised by, by normal people? Um, yes, because when if you have a, a bird in, in your house and... Mm -hmm and you put uh, it in out of in the environment mm -hmm. i think it will die in in a few days or in a few hours yeah. or in a few minutes because uh, it doesn't know how to survive in in this yeah, environment exactly mm -hmm. i think it's for this it's important uh, that these cranes uh, could think that they are with uh, another with cranes. other birds, yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good. And it says that that the scientists try to um, to teach even the the baby cranes how to forage for food or how to find food. So um, so they would be when they release them into the wild, they would feel like they need to go with the other cranes, and that's how they could survive and continue um, continue breeding in the wild to make more cranes. Excellent job. So this is such a nice thing that the scientists are doing to help um, this crane population that was so low. They were almost extinct. Um, okay, maybe I could ask Elena to read um, the three paragraphs under the subheading Moose. Yes. <laughs> moose. The problem. Scientists needed to know how wild moose in the Yellowstone area responded to odors or pre predators, predators. such as mm -hmm. preda predators, Very good. such as vo wolves uh, that were recolonizing the region after being hunted nearly, nearly to extinction. But first, they had to place predator poop near the normally skittish moose. The solution. Wear a moose suit and casually drop it near the large mammals, said Joe Berger, a wildlife biologist at the Wildlife Con Conservation Society. Berger and colleagues research uh, Published in Science in 201. 2001? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, 2001. Yeah. <laughs> Found that moose had indeed forgotten that they should run as a reef of wolf. Research since has shown that the animal don't quickly or became dinner. Okay. Very good. So, so what do these scientists um, try to find out about about moose and wolves? Uh, uh, I should know what does it mean, moose. <laughs> um, oh, a moose. Okay, let me. 
I'll okay. click on it. I found, okay. I found, okay. I found the picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh. Mm -hmm. mm, they they make a research about the orders, yeah, the, about the orders of predators, predator, predators, predators. yeah, <laughs> predators, <laughs> yeah. and how they how they could recognize the region and their areas, yeah. Um, well, okay, yeah, so it says that the wolves came back, like, um, a long time ago, everyone used to hunt wolves, and so they were almost extinct, but now um, people are trying to save the wolves, so the wolves are coming back, but the wolves are eating all of these moose, and mm -hmm. so in this time that there were no wolves, um, they think that, that the moose forgot that they're supposed to run away from the wolves. <laughs> because there there weren't any wolves for a long time, so um, so what did they have to do? I think I, you always get stuck with like with the gross <laughs> ones. Maybe we could ask, um, maybe we could ask Aka. Aka, what did they have to do to test this out to see if the wolf, if the moose recognized they, the wolf smell? They put put the predator's poof. Mm-hmm, the poop. <laughs> <laughs> near the uh, normally skittish moose. I, I don't know the skittish, but uh, near the skittish moose. Skittish means um, that they're afraid. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So they tr tr uh, they check the how uh, moose react that uh, smell or poop. Yeah, so probably. how did they do that? How did they get close enough to the moose to put the wolf poop there? Mm -hmm. What did they have mm -hmm. to do? Maybe a uh, uh, to wear a suit. A uh, moose suit. Yeah. <laughs> so these poor scientists, if you can imagine, they're like walking out into the field and they, they're dressed like a moose and they have like a bag of wolf poop and they, <laughs> you know, like that would be a very uncomfortable thing to do. Um, but they did it because they, they wanted to help the animals. So it's a really nice thing that, a nice sacrifice <laughs> that they yeah. made to help. Seems like uh, eyes, visual, and smell is very important to recognize something for animals. Sounds like that. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So next, we're gonna see um, how they help crocodiles. I think the crocodiles are the last one. So, um, Antonio, maybe you can read the first. Let's see. Maybe you can read the first three paragraphs under the crocodiles subheading. Okay, <clears throat> crocodiles. Speaking of poop, uh, hippopotamus. Hippopotamuses. Hippopotamuses <laughs> make so much that they affect the water quality in Kenya's Mara River. Uh, there are over 4,000 hippos, and we figure they contribute about 36 tons every day. Said Amanda Subaluski. Uh, Doctor, student, a PhD, no? PhD, student in ecology and evolutionary biology at Yale University in New Haven, uh, Connecticut, 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 Connecticut. Swalewski, uh, who studies water quality, wanted to know if all that hippopop kills fish when the river is uh, flooded. The trouble is getting good water samples means risking being squashed by one of several photon charging hippos. Okay, so what was the possible problem, Antonio, with these hippos in the water? Uh, the problem is um, if they uh, keep the water, no, the 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 hippos could we die. Or no? Yeah, no. The, the hippos, there are there are a lot of hippos. There are 4,000 of them. So because there are a lot of hippos, and the hippos are really big, um, that means that they poop a lot. <laughs> so their poop goes in the water. <laughs> so, um, so... Could we die the fish thing? 
Yes, yeah, it's killing oh. the fish. So, uh, so they the needed to find out how how they could test and see if the fish were dying because of this, um, because of this hippo poop. <laughs> so, um, maybe we could ask Adrian to read the last um, the last couple of paragraphs here. Where it says, enter her teams. Um, enter her teams, consummate uh, remote contract boat, which is uh, dis dis disguised, dis disguised uh, with a like a life like a nil cockerel head and fully loaded with water sensor and sonar that record the river's depth, oxygen levels, and conductivity. Hippos and crocs ignore each other, uh, so they this decide work it. And the team successfully stirred uh, the two foot long uh, craft uh, throughout several hippo uh, swimming hall. Uh, has uh, for whether uh, whether the hippo pop is uh, deadly. Uh, that's still under investigation. Uh, the team is analyzing data and will launch again in sh January. It might uh, sound like a creepy shop, but someone has to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, excellent job, Adrian. Very, very good. Um, so I'm going to ask, uh, maybe I can ask Mauricio, how did they try to do these, these tests on the water? Because hippos are very dangerous, so how did they get in there? And yes, and I don't know. Maybe they 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 went in the water uh, with I don't know with sensors, and, and I don't know. <laughs> did the people go in the water, or they they use something else? No, they use something else. Mhm. Mm okay, and so what what did they use? And uh, sensors and oxygen levels and. Mm -hmm. Well, they yes. used a little like it says in the beginning. It says a customized remote-controlled boat, so it's kind of like a robot. And what did the robot look like? Did it look like a person? And I don't know. <laughs> It's okay. Um, Aka, did you see what did what did the robot look like that they sent? A uh, crocodile, because hippos and croc crocos ignore each other. Probably uh, they prepare the crocodile style robot. Yeah, very good. So, um, so they made a little robot that looks like a crocodile, and it had all of these sensors and everything, like like Mauricio said, um, to try to test the quality of the water. So, um, we can see that these scientists made huge sacrifices, um, to try to um help and do research and save these different kinds of animals. So, um. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. I'm going to have you guys interview each other now to find out how many sacrifices your classmates, other people in the class, might make. Um, so maybe I could ask um, Adrian, would you like to read the instructions here? Yes. Each student will interview another student in the class using uh, at least uh, three questions. They can use the interview question on the next next page, page and make up uh, their own question. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to start with, um, these are some sample questions you guys can use um, to ask the other students. And I'm going to start with David. David, I'd like you to interview Elena. Okay. Um, Elena, uh, are you willing to work in with uh, lions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for a <your> question, <laughs> David. Um, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes, uh, I believe that one day I will be so brave that I would like to uh, to work with lions. Yeah, mm. that's my answer. Mm, yes, one day or today. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Today One day. I'm not ready for that, unfortunately. <laughs> but I will try. 
Uh, okay, uh, so I, I have here a lion costume for you and my idea is uh, if you can dress up this costume and, and spend a whole day with lions and take notes about uh, their behavior. Um, yeah, uh, one day I can do that. <laughs> I will do, I promise, but uh, right now I, I need uh, some extra lessons with uh, Michelle <laughs> for knowing better animal planet and uh, after I will, I will, do, I will wear uh, nice uh, costume of, uh, of a lion and uh, I will do some researches for our nature and I will be like a science. I have, I have another idea. If you can drive a, a kind of a lion drone and you can drive it uh, from your computer uh, and <laughs> you can record all, all you see uh, through your camera. Uh, I think it's it's easier and and less dangerous. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice idea. Right. Great job, guys. That was really good. Okay, Elena, I'd like you to interview Antonio. Can you ask him some questions? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Antonio, have you ever saved an animal before? Share this story with us, please. Uh, well said. Uh, almost. Cause no, no. <laughs> almost. <laughs> yes, uh, I have. I had uh, two birds um, with a egg. Then the the birds disappear and the egg. Well, the 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 bird the baby bird uh, was born, but then um, he has he had hungry, but uh, it's difficult for me to make his his meal. Then I try to to give the no give gave. Mm -hmm. I his, tried to give uh, yeah. But but it's impossible uh, to to. Eat uh, for his uh, stomach. Then finally he died. Oh. For that I but I say tried. But you tried. Yeah. That's a sad yeah. story. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I don't. I, I, I could say it to finally survive that. The truth is more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's life. Sometimes birds die. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe Antonio, you could interview Adrian. Do you want to try to ask him also a question? Uh, okay. I, I I do a question, no? For okay, okay. For Adrian. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Adrian. Adrian. Uh, the second one. Uh, what kind of injury? In the right animals, do they have in your country? Okay, that that word is pronounced like endangered. Endangered. Ah, endangered. Endangered. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. um, maybe um, uh, our uh, native fauna um, in the animal. Um, uh, and and Dasher is um, a carpincho. It's a, a, a kind of um, uh, kind of the animal. The um, is the 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 the, the bigger um, is the bigger. Um, uh, I don't know um, the, the the most. The most um, space is roedor. I'm not sure. Brilliant. Should you write it in the chat box? Yeah. Yes. Oh. 
Yes, it's um, um, the 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 carpincho is a, a, a um, is a, a rodent. Oh, okay. It's yes. a rodent. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a, a biggest uh, rodent in the world. Uh, oh wow! It's, maybe it's uh, in other country in um, Brazil is um, it's uh, called um, as a uh, capybara, too. Capybara or carpincho is the same. Right? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard yeah. of them before. So uh, they have them in in Uruguay. Yeah. Yes. Is uh, they uh, live uh, in general live in. Um, near the the river, uh, the rivers, um, uh, 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 they they are hunted. Uh, oh. Yes, they are hunted, but um, well, it's, it's, it is it is uh, it is the the animal uh, that I I know. That uh, uh, I know uh, 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 it uh, uh, he he uh, is in 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 endangered in danger yeah okay yeah. wow that's interesting yeah I'll have to look it up later on Google about like the the wild animals in Uruguay. That sounds really cool. Great job, Adrian. Okay, Adrian, maybe Thank you can ask a question to Mauricio. Mauricio. Um, uh, what thing uh, would you be unwilling to do to save a uh, space? Um. What things and maybe and I don't know. I wouldn't give my life for a, for an animal, for example. <laughs> and, and I don't know. And I don't know. <laughs> and, Well, like earlier, we were reading examples of scientists doing some crazy things to help um, other other species. Um, so, would you be willing to do all those crazy things? And yes, I think yes. Yeah, <laughs> and, really? Yeah, because yes, and, and I think it's nice to try new things. <laughs> <And> maybe, <laughs> Maybe I could do it. <laughs> but even yeah. like the panda, remember the panda? Yeah, 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 with the poop and all the things. <laughs> Maybe, <Yeah>. why not? <laughs> wow, you would do that? And yeah, yeah, why not? Wow. <laughs> well, you would be a good biologist then. You would be a good scientist. <laughs> I don't know. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Okay, great job. Good question, Adrian. A nice answer, Mauricio. Okay, so Mauricio, maybe you could ask um, Aka a question. Uh, okay, Aka, uh, the last one. Mm -hmm. If you could say one animal from extinction, which would you choose and why? Mm, one. Uh, a kind of human. It's strange answer, probably. The human? I, yeah, human. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, the people are worried about, you know, the the environment now. But if uh, yeah. the environment is worse and worse, maybe we will be you know, edge of kind of uh, is extinction, extinct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I save uh, human. So I want to save uh, environment for that. Okay, that's a really good answer. I think I would agree. I think I would probably save people <laughs> <laughs> over over animals. Very good. 
Okay, um, Carlos, is your microphone working? I saw that you were able to make it back into class. Okay, yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. okay so maybe I was fighting with uh, with uh, my new operating system because oh, I bought a new okay. computer and now oh. with Windows 8, you know. It's complicated. Uh, Microsoft changed everything. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. No, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> well maybe Aka you can ask Carlos a question. Okay, uh, Carlos, uh, what things would you be unwilling to do to save a species? No, oh, could, could you repeat, please? Sorry. Okay. What things would you be unwilling to do to save a species? What thing I am waiting to do? Uh, so in future. No, something that you would be unwilling to do. Que no sería dispuesto a hacer. Ah, sí, sí, sí. No, no. Um, well, what, <laughs> a thing that I'm not uh, disposed to do, I'm not expected to do will be, for example, living a life without doing nothing. So, <laughs> so I need always, every day I need to do anything because something, because uh, I'm an energetic and active person. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not expecting my future, for, for example, when I, uh, I become retired, to be sitting in a square feeding the goats <laughs> <laughs> and doing nothing. Yeah, that, that's uh, the thing that uh, uh, I'm not willing to do. It's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to keep your active lifestyle. That's good. Yeah, always, okay. always. Yeah. yeah, good job. Okay, Carlos, maybe you could ask um, a question also um, to David. To David? Mm -hmm. um, uh, David, uh, have you ever saved an animal before? Could, could you could you tell us uh, about your story if you did it in, in past? Yes, I think it was uh, many years ago, and uh, I found a little bird in, in on the street, Aww. and he, he 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 couldn't fly, and and I took uh, him to my house, and I tried to save him but I'm afraid that I I couldn't uh, I think uh, in one day the bird uh, decided to fly to <laughs> to a, a better place I think. <laughs> okay anyway you did the, you, you did the best you could uh, so yes okay, okay. Yes. good Oh, uh, yeah, that's nice that you tried to help him. That's really good. Great job. Well, you guys all did really well asking and answering questions. I'm really impressed. Um, I noticed that you guys all had really good um, question intonation, too. Um, it sounded really natural when you were asking them. So I wanted to share just briefly. We just have like two minutes left in the class, but I wanted to share some phrasal verbs with you. So um, maybe we could ask Elena to read this phrasal verb and the example for us. Okay. Look up to, respect and admire. Example. I look up to a scientist who tried to save an endangered species. Species. Uh -huh. Very good. Endangered species. <laughs> Very good. Endangered species. Excellent. Nice job. Okay, so um, can maybe Akko, would you like to try to use this phrase "look up to" in a sentence? Yes, uh, I look up to. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> uh, uh, Nelson Mandela, his life. Pretty, I look up to him. Okay, great. Very, very good. Excellent job. Okay, another one is here, another phrasal verb. Maybe, Antonio, you could read this one for us. Uh, try out to test something new. Example, marine biologists want to try out a new therapy for injured dolphins. Okay, great. Very good reading, Antonio. Thank you. Thank you. Um, David, would you like to try to use this uh, phrasal verb in a sentence? Try out? Uh, yes. Uh, 
I'm not willing to try out how do you feel when you sprinkle with panda poop. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I don't think I'm willing to try that out either. <laughs> Great job. Very, very nice. Okay, and I also wanted to show you guys an idiom. Um, because we were talking a lot about poop today, so I thought this one was appropriate. Um, Adrian, maybe you could read this for us. Uh, answer answer uh, the call of nature. Nature uh, to go the to go to the toilet. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Can you read the example too? Uh, Sherry will be right. Back, uh, he, he went to answer the call of nature. Okay, nice job. So maybe Mauricio, I can ask you if you would like to try to use that in a sentence to answer the call of nature. Um, okay, and um, maybe uh, um, no, no, I have to leave this class because I have to answer the call of nature. <laughs> Okay, great job. Very, very good. Uh, well, I'm hoping you guys can use these phrasal verbs and idioms. Uh, look up to, try out, and answer the call of nature. Try to use those, if possible, in your conversations this week in English. And um, that way you'll be able to really remember them. They'll stick well in your mind, and, and they'll become part of your vocabulary. But everyone did an amazing job in class today. Thank you guys so much for your participation. And it was really fun. I'm glad we got to do it together. So thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys.